Another weekend, another instance in which Kepa has been lampooned by the masses. But does he deserve the criticism? Was he even a good buy to begin with? And what will new signing Edward Mendy offer? Hey, I'm Adrian and welcome to Rabona TV. If you find yourself enjoying the content, then consider subscribing. It's free after all. Especially if you like more in-depth football explainers, topical content, and more. All right, vamos. When it was made clear that Thibaut Courtois was to leave Chelsea for a return to Madrid, this time via Real Madrid, the £35 million they were getting from his sale seemed as if it would be more than enough to get an extremely capable replacement. And then, well, let me be 100% transparent here, when I saw that it was looking as if they were signing Kepa Aritza Balaga from Athletic Bilbao, I was confused. I had barely heard of this guy, only really remembering his name from the few Bilbao matches I had caught throughout that 2017-18 season, and recognizing the Eriza Balaga part from reading through lineups. I mean, how could you forget the Eriza Balaga part? So okay, going for a younger keeper isn't a bad idea at all, as they can grow into something special at your club, but for 71.6 million pounds? Ederson was made the most expensive keeper in the world when he was bought from Benfica a summer before, and he was an instant hit at Manchester City. His shot stopping, distribution, and cross collection justified his expense, as his contribution to City's record breaking season couldn't be understated. Liverpool, they retaliated in the following summer. After their defense suffering at the hands of shoddy keeping for far too many years, it hit a breaking point in the 2018 Champions League final when Loris Karius made two glaring errors that cost Liverpool the Champions League title. And so they broke the goalkeeping fee record themselves and bringing in Alison Becker and their decision has been justified as he has established himself as one of the best keepers in the world after proving at Roma that he was one of the best keepers in Europe. But Chelsea, they took a different route. After failing to sign Jan Oblak, an established shot stopper, they turned to Kepa Aritza Balaga, then 23 years old, athletic Bilbao keeper who had just a single cap for Spain's national team, and they broke the transfer record for a keeper yet again, a record that still stands. Early on, we saw flashes of quality from Kepa, but very quickly, it all fell, both in performance and professionalism, that on-field fight with Sari being the highlight of the latter. We've seen plenty of blunders, plenty of tame strikes find their way past him, gaffes with the ball at his feet, everything. Want to put numbers on it? Since he has joined the Premier League, he has conceded more goals from outside of the box with 19 than any other keeper. And according to James Olley of ESPN, his expected goals differential is 12.7. In other words, he has conceded 12.7 more goals than what would be expected of him, based upon the shots that he has faced in the Premier League. That's not great. And I know you might be thinking, well, those are just stats. If you look hard enough, I'm sure you could dig up a stat that proves that Cristiano Ronaldo has some of the best defensive performances of all time, or something like that. Which, okay, maybe. Stats can definitely be cherry-picked, and stats aren't for everyone just yet. But the thing is, StatsBomb, a leading data and analytics firm, released an article that highlighted all of these deficiencies in Kepa's game before he even played his first few matches for Chelsea. In the article posted by StatsBomb on August 16th, 2018, titled, Chelsea's Rebound Date, Kepa Aritza Balaga, which I of course have linked below, Every single thing that has proven to be a problem in Kepa's game had been highlighted by them prior. Honestly, I highly, highly, highly recommend you check out the article as, well, hindsight is of course 2020 and he could have exceeded expectations, but Chelsea would have been aware of this data before buying him, right? Right? So let's start with the good, which is his positioning, in which during the 2017-18 season, you can see that he, statistically speaking, occupied the best space for giving himself the best chance at stopping an attempt on goal. As you can see, they even included a comparison to Oblak, one of the best in the world, someone that Chelsea tried to sign a couple times, to show that Kepa and Oblak were nearly identical in this regard. But that's where the similarities ended. When it comes to dealing with crosses, and this is contestable as not all keepers such as David De Gea, as noted by Statsbomb, are aggressive when it comes to crosses. But Kepa still performed below average in this regard as he ranked 25th when combining both La Liga and the Premier League keepers, the regulars. So from 40, he was 25th. 
One of the things people pointed toward was how he would be perfect for Sadi, as he was great with the ball at his feet, when in reality, he wasn't great for Bilbao and was even worse when being pressured. For example, Stasbaum notes that when Ederson is pressured, his pass completion rate drops by just 5%, whereas Kepa's completion rate drops by 18.7%, or at least it did in the 17-18 season in Spain. The average drop in a goalkeeper's pass completion rate when getting pressured by attackers is 10.5%, much less than Kepa's 18.7% drop when being pressured. And as for shot stopping, Kepa ranked pretty poorly. He conceded 37 goals from 126 shots when it was expected that he would concede 31.35, that a keeper of average performance would have conceded 31.35 goals, but Kepa conceded 37, meaning he was at fault for almost five goals that Bilbao conceded. These numbers, when compared to 19 other keepers from La Liga during the 2017-18 season, ranked Kepa as low as the 16th best shot stopper in the league. The warning signs were there. In nearly every category that Statsbaum explored, Kepa ranked poorly, and Chelsea were surely aware of it. And if they were, why take such a massive gamble on him? I mean, I wish I had an answer for you, but beyond, well, he's young and he could improve, that's about the only thing I've got. Nothing else really points to a justification of a 71.6 million pound transfer for this guy. Now, 20 million pounds for someone who both statistically and in the opinion of one of Chelsea's goalkeeping coaches was considered to be the best keeper in France? Now that makes much more sense. While well, Maurizio Sarri allowed himself to be bullied by Kepa, Frank Lampard certainly wasn't willing to do so. From the outset, it didn't seem like he had taken too kindly to Kepa. His reluctance to learn English was a mark against him, off-pitch issues in his private life were affecting how he would train and perform, and then of course, well the fact that he overall just simply hadn't been very good for Chelsea since his arrival. And so, Lampard was increasingly choosing his second choice keeper, Willy Caballero, more often than the average second choice keeper gets chosen. There was even a run in February where Lampard dropped Kepa for five matches straight. Plenty of money was spent on the attacking options this past summer of 2020, and finally, a new keeper assigned with Chelsea. Edouard Mendy, a 28-year-old keeper who last played for Rennes, has been kicking around the various tiers of French football for nearly a decade now, but it was only at the age of 24 when playing for Reim in Ligue 2 that he had established himself as a regular. In the 2017-18 Ligue 2 season, he was the starter for Reim. For the first time in his career, he was the number one at a club, and he took the responsibility and he ran with it. With Mendy in goal, Reim finished 15 points clear of second place, conceding just 24 goals from 38 matches, and winning promotion to Ligue 1 with 18 clean sheets to his name from 34 matches. Mendy followed that up with 14 clean sheets in the top flight before switching from Reim to Rennes for the 2019-20 season, where again, he continued to excel as he helped Rennes finish third and qualify for the Champions League. So how does Mendy compare to Kepa? Well, for starters, he's way bigger. He's six foot six, five inches taller than Kepa, meaning his wingspan is very impressive. For comparison, he's nearly the exact same height as Thibaut Courtois. And according to Mark Schwarzer, that changes things for Chelsea's back line and knowing that their keeper will control the box. Speaking to Sky Sports, Schwarzer said, quote, they're certainly bringing in a goalkeeper that is commanding of his 18-yard box. I think that's something that Chelsea have lacked a little bit, particularly since Thibaut Courtois and Peter Cech left the club. Two goalkeepers that more often than not came out and dominated their 18-yard box. Cape has not been one to carry that on. Mendy's a big guy. He loves to come out and take crosses, and that itself will alleviate so much pressure for defenders, and it's huge for a team. And the numbers? Sky Sports also did a quick comparison of some key keeping stats, and as you can see, Mendy is dominant over Kepa in that regard as well. There's a muddying of the waters, of course, when it comes to goalkeeper stats, as the defense in front of the keeper does make a difference as well. They're symbiotic. But by all accounts, the better keeper of the last few seasons has been Mendy. Lampard himself said that Peter Cech was influential in the signing of Mendy, but Chelsea's head of goalkeeping, Christophe Lolichon, has been watching him since 2018, or earlier, once Kepa had already been signed to Chelsea. Speaking to Le Faucine, at the end of 2018, Lolichon had this to say of Mendy, quote, 
He has reached maturity with a fairly unusual path, and it is all the more meritorious. Edouard Mendy is today, for me, the best keeper in the championship of France. He is what I call proactive, a very influential keeper who does not suffer through the game. In any case, he's a great goalkeeper that we necessarily follow in the Premier League. When you are nearly two meters tall, with such a ground game, such placement and initiative taking as he has, if recruiters don't look at him, it's because they have to change jobs. So all things point towards Mendy being an extremely capable, if not excellent, keeper. But what about Kepa now? Mendy could actually be an inspiration for Kepa if he isn't too proud to allow him to be. At one time, Kepa was considered to be a decent up-and-coming keeper for Spain, not exactly considered to be the best ever, as plenty of statisticians had warned that he was not as good as Chelsea had valued him. But his potential was noticed by many, and so Chelsea figured his purchase at such a young age and for such an exorbitant fee was warranted. Flash forward two years and he is still just 25 years old and can easily turn things around yet, especially when considering goalkeepers tend to have the longest careers of any other position in football. Mendy? He's considered to be a late bloomer himself, as he is 28 years old already and couldn't find a team to play on just a few years ago. But now, he has had a few great campaigns for Reem and Ren, and has just signed with a great Premier League side that has aspirations of cracking the top two, let alone to be champions of England once again. Instead of seeing his late bloomer of a replacement as an embarrassing chapter of his career, Kepa could do well to draw inspiration from Mendy. Inspiration from the fact that it's never too late to turn things around for keepers. Look at Chesney. Chesney did it with his move to Italy. Van der Sar did it with his move from Juventus to Fulham, where he then reclimbed the ladder and eventually retired from football with Manchester United as one of the best keepers ever. Now, the issue for Chelsea is that with both of the cases mentioned, the players had to leave their respective clubs and leagues in order to re-establish themselves elsewhere. And so in regards to his Chelsea career, it probably isn't over. No club would invest 71 million pounds in a keeper if they weren't in it for the long haul, if they didn't see him as someone that will be at the club for many, many years. And while Mendy will provide Chelsea with a great alternative to Kepa and goal, he will also, in theory, provide a legitimate threat to Kepa's starting spot. Mendy will first and foremost be a great option for Lampard on the pitch, but will hopefully push Kepa to improve off of the pitch if he wants to get in the starting lineup. It's a lot of money to throw at a single position. The nearly £72 million for Kepa, potentially requiring a further £20 million in investment to push him to become the keeper they hoped he would via Mendy. Or maybe he never will, and the £20 million Mendy will provide yet another reminder that fees don't always guarantee quality, and that it's never too late to climb the football ladder. What do you think? Is Kepa done at Chelsea? Maybe you fall into the camp that he is hard done by? Let me know in the comments, but beyond that, I thank you for watching the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao.